All right. I am live. All right. I am live on uh, YouTube here on the uh, Journey to the Last Frontier channel with Alec Rosen, your adventurer and raconteur. tour. I was originally planning on doing this in my office uh, where I work, but doing this at the house today for logistical reasons and some other stuff. Well, today's topic, we're going to be discussing, are you ready to explore the world after 60 years old? You could even push that back to 55. I'm, I'm 61 and I have just a tremendous amount of uh, world travel and adventure experience. Um, when I was in my younger days and even now doing a lot more actually now at 60 than I was doing in my uh, 30s and 40s when I was busy raising a family. So we're going to talk today about what adventure travel planning looks like for us folks that are 55, 60 and over. We're going to talk about how to plan health tips, travel tips, safety, physical training, um, going to the gym and working out. We're going to talk about how to research and plan and how to start slow uh, from where, um, you know, before you just jump into things. So before we get into our adventure travel for those over 60, let me give a little bit of personal background about myself. Uh, I certainly, a lot of, I, I write on my uh, my blog, our journey to the last frontier.com. You could also find that at alecjrosen.net or jtlf.com or .org. I forget which one it's under, but it's under one of those. Any event, uh, I have been basically traveling since I was 17 years old when I joined the U.S. Navy. By the time I was in my mid-20s, okay, probably about 25, 26 years old, I've been to more than 50 countries on five continents. So by the time I was in my... Uh, mid late twenties, I have done more travel and adventure shit than most people wind up doing in an entire uh, life. Okay, and in my thirties, uh, forties, even into my early fifties, really, you know, work, career, money, family, raising kids, and all of that. So some of the crazier adventure travels kind of went on the back burner with family vacations uh, and work obligations. However, I did do a lot of adventure stuff when the kids were little. Grand Tetons, Florida Everglades, which is, I, I live in South Florida, so that's pretty close. But took them to mountains, took them to the rainforest in Costa Rica, the rainforest in Brazil. So even when the kids were little, we we did kind of you know, some adventurous family vacations that were, you know, family friendly. So um, I guess a lot of the adventure travel in the, my latter years, in the last couple of years, really got prompted by the pandemic. You know, sitting home, thinking about what the fuck am I going to do with the rest of my life? I'm not working anymore, basically retired. And I decided re I really want to go back to doing what I enjoyed doing when I was younger and what I still enjoy doing, which is doing adventurous travel. Uh, last year, I, I spent three weeks in Alaska. That's been well documented on my YouTube channel and our blog, Journey to the Last Frontier. That was the genesis for my digital platforms here, social media platforms. So Again, welcome to today's live stream on adventure travel for the 60 year old and older or 55 and older, however you want to put yourself in whatever bucket. And talking about buckets, this is not a bucket list trip video chat. If you're looking for a bucket list on where to go in Europe or what cruises or beaches and mountains, you're 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 checking in on the wrong thing. This is really about getting your adventure on off-grid, offline, off-road. Okay, three weeks in the Alaska Outback. I did that last year. This year, I'm going to be spending uh, two weeks in the Amazon uh, jungle uh, fishing and exploring, and again, doing that in uh, January of next year. So let's get into it. So tip one, the most important thing, the most important thing is really personal safety. Okay, 
And, you know, one of the things I, I talk about in the actual video and the blog post on this is building a custom first aid kit. Now, I have a lot of different first aid kits. This is the field kit I built specifically for my Alaska trip. And I actually took two. I took a main uh, field kit that I could do everything up until a little bit of surgery if one needed. Uh, and as well as a uh, or just a regular uh, first aid kit. But you can see in, in this one here, this was built specifically for when I was out in, um, in Alaska. I have some surgical tools that if I needed to do anything, I have uh, splints. I have all the different types of um, uh, equipment that one would need, including, I'm just moving this down a little bit, including even da -da -da -da, first aid books and notes in order to write notes if, if I need to leave information about myself if I'm incapacitated. So this was something that was that was with my in my gear bag constantly, as well as a small little uh, first aid. So a first aid is really important. Um, and I do have a, a, a different kit, not taking this heavy one to the Amazon. I'm taking a much lighter one that will include malaria pills, insect uh, creams uh, for bugs. I have a venomous snake bite um, extractor that um, that I have in, in I keep that in my truck actually. So when I go four wheel driving in the Everglades or Big Cypress, I have that ready. So uh, first aid kit is 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 critical and learn how to use it. Don't just take it and not know how to use it. Okay, the next thing that's really important, and when you're when you're doing these adventure travels, a large percentage of the trip, up to 100 percent will be off the grid, offline, no internet, new no cell phone new data communications. I kept in touch with my wife uh, and my family and friends when I was north of the Arctic Circle, fishing offshore Alaska and in com completely remote areas in Alaska, like gates of, the, gates of the Arctic National Park. Okay, that park has no roads going in, no roads going out and no service of any type. So for that particular trip, I had, and I have it here, a Garmin, a uh, InReach Explorer Plus two-way uh, two-way satellite communication device, and here it has everything you need. Uh, you could uh, send your GPS coordinates. It has preset um, preset messages that you could you can con with your contacts send those out, as well as via the Bluetooth on your phone send regular text messages, or you can use the the stupid keypad here. This was great. Uh, my wife and um, uh, two buddies of mine were able to track in real time on 10 minute intervals where I was at all the time. Every day before I would head out, I would send a satellite communication text. Hey, everything's good. Here's my here's my coordinates. This is where I'm going. And every 10 minutes they can get a if they needed to follow. They can get a live update to see where I was within 10 minutes uh, satellite time. For the Amazon, this is a little too heavy because I'm weight li weight limited to 18 kilos. So for my Amazon trip, I just bought the Garmin uh, InReach Mini 2. Has the same functionality, not the same keypad. It's much much lighter. Has the carbon nine or uh, the carbon nine carbon whatever this thing is. The carbon whatever I can never say it. Um, anyway, same functionality, same deal. While I'm in the Amazon, I'll be able to communicate via text and GPS coordinates with my wife and my support team. Um, that's really critical when you're going to go offline. I have preset things. I'm starting out. I'm safe. Wish you were here. Um, and if I need help, both of these have an SOS button. You just pull the tab, press this and hold it down for three seconds or four seconds. And it will send a signal via the via the satellite, and um, that would initiate a search and rescue or extraction. And we'll talk about insurance later. So those are that's that's tip one. Tip two, okay, number two on this is physical training. So before we get into the physicality of uh, the trips, the most important thing is know your limitations, know what you're capable of doing. OK, I uh, you know, when you're over 60 or over 50 or whatever, you're going to have health limitations, whether it's bad knees, bad back, bad, bad feet, which is in my particular case, uh, as well as um, 
issues pertaining to high blood pressure, cholesterol, all of those things. So, you know, know your limitations, what you're physically capable of doing within your comfort zone. Don't push yourself beyond the limits, okay? Know your limits and you can bring yourself to those limits. You push yourself beyond those limits in the outback, um, you may not come back. So just, just keep that in mind, okay? And I've had I've had close calls on on a lot of different trips, um, from uh, major concussion fishing offshore, the Outer Banks of North Carolina, uh, to uh, having to turn around off road in Alaska because I didn't have a gun and I was deep in bear country, and I did not want to get stuck on muddy, ruddy roads without without the proper uh, equipment. So know your limitations. Now you got to train for your adventure. I go to uh, my trainer uh, three times a week. We focus a lot on cardio and strength. I don't want to build up mass. I don't need to be ripped or anything. These are pretty good for me and happy with that. Uh, lose weight, strength training, stamina, get the heart rate up. Um, my rule of thumb for me personally is I want to be able to uh, bike 50 kilometers hike 10 miles, paddle, uh, kayak, or canoe for two and a half to three hours straight. I don't plan on doing any of those activities, Not, but I am physically capable of doing all of those activities. That's the difference, okay? Uh, I do have uh, really severe plantar fasciitis on my feet, and uh, sometimes, I, I, sometimes I can't hike. Uh, the last time I had a really bad attack, I was <laughs> walking, hiking up uh, Masada in, in Israel, and um, I had to power through it, through the pain to get up to the top, and I took the cable car on the way back down. But uh, that's in a, in a place where it's, it's touristy and there's support and there's medical attention if one needed. Anyway, know your limitations, train for your adventure. Okay, so what are we going to talk about for tip three? Research and planning. Um, this is not wing it, okay? This is not like I'm going to go to, you know, just pick some random European capital and go get lost in the city streets and use my phone to track myself back to uh, the hotel. No, this is real serious shit, and you got to really plan it logistically. So first off, you need the right gear for whatever you're doing. If you know, now uh, my gear that I, I had for Alaska does not work obviously in the Amazon, different climate, different terrain. Everything is completely different. I'm not even taking the same first aid kit because I, I, I don't need that. Okay. Uh, and I didn't need malaria pills in Alaska either. So have to have the right gear for the right trip as both of these are fishing expeditions. Some of the fishing gear that I, I bought for Alaska does work in the Amazon, but overwhelmingly 90% of my gear for Alaska is, is not going to work in the Amazon. It will work when I go to Iceland the following year or the Canadian Arctic with my son who lives in Toronto, but not going to work in the Amazon. So you need the right gear and you got to understand the challenges in the area where you're going, mud, ice, snow, off the grid, rocks, you know, off road, you know, every, every place has its challenges. Um, in the Amazon where we're going, the fishing camp that we're staying at is a half a day boat ride from the nearest dirt road, which is that dirt road is a four hour Jeep ride to the nearest town. So you're a full day away from civilization. Okay. So in Alaska, uh, some of the areas I went to were, were that remote, uh, particularly in the Arctic, where the nearest uh, facilities were um, six to eight hours away south in Fairbanks, where I was, uh, north of the Arctic Circle. So you got to understand the challenges of what you're putting yourself into and prepare for that with gear, first aid kits, food, water, water tablets for survival situations, things like that. Um, so the next thing is, uh, planning is maps. Okay. And I'm not talking about using the maps on your phone. Okay. No, 
I'm talking about GPS, understand how to use a GPS, understand how to use a compass, and more importantly, uh, take maps. I, I brought multiple maps on the trip to Alaska, uh, it was a road map. Okay, so I was able to, you know, understand just where I was driving uh, without having to worry about uh, GPS or a phone because most of the place there was no service. I brought topographical maps for where I was traveling. This was the ones for the gates to the Arctic. So this is a top topo map just for one of the largest uh, national parks in the country. This park is the size of Switzerland. Okay. So um, learn how to use the maps, familiarize yourself with all of this technology, whether it's analog maps, GPS, uh, Garmin, or other devices. Learn how to read a compass, learn how to orientate yourself. Hopefully you'll never need it, but if you do, it's better to know how to do it uh, than starting to learn in a panic situation out in the field. So maps are, are critical importance. The good thing about these TAFO maps, they're waterproof. Okay, this is actually a waterproof map. This this one, not so much. It's, it's just a, uh, a road map that you can pick up at any gas station. I do remember when they were free, but there's no more free maps anymore. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about here is tip four. Start slow and close to home. I didn't wake up and decide, you know, fuck, I'm going to go spend three weeks in Alaska, including a week in the Arctic and just buy my plane ticket and go. Now, besides all the things we talked about already, I started slow. Um, I was able to test my gear in the Everglades and in some various state parks here in Florida. Obviously the climate's a little differently, I get that, but able to, to really start slow and, and test things that I needed to do. And that, that's critical, make day trips, go to a state park, go to a national park, familiarize yourself with the maps that your your gps or what have you so you have an understanding of what you're doing if you're going to be rucksacking it with a, a, a 20 pound backpack take that 20 pound backpack with you and actually do it so you're not doing it for the first time on this adventure remember we're all 55 and older we're 60 years old and older you know um shit happens, you know, knees and, and backs and shoulders and stuff like that. So you got to, you got to start slow and then you can go into it. Um, one of the other things that I, I did not talk about in, in the first video, but I will mention here in the live chat is um, I, I, I get your physical. I, I got a full physical uh, about two months before I went to Alaska. And I also went to see a cardiologist and did the EKG and all of that to make sure the old ticker was in good condition for, um, uh, for, for, for the trip. And I will be doing the same uh, before going to uh, the Amazon uh, later this year in, 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 in um, August. So um, those are the top uh, four tips for adventure travel after 60 years old. I do plan on having more blog posts and more videos similar to this. Um, I think we're just about out of time here and I will be able to um, respond to any questions in the chat or in the comment section as this video then you know, becomes archived. Uh, and I will, at the appropriate time, put links in to some of the other content that we uh, talked about. All right. Peace out and enjoy your travels.